We are now moving to our last session of the day before lunch and it will talk about indirect taxes in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, implications of the value added tax and how would it impact our businesses. The Vision 2030 also has an objective to increase the non-oil government revenue from Saudi Riyal 163 billion to Saudi Riyal 1 trillion. We have heard his Excellency Mr. Sadhan talking about various government initiatives including the value added tax. The organizing committee has gathered for you a very esteemed panel of professionals who have been working in various capacities in respect of zakat and tax. May I call upon stage our esteemed panelists, Mr. Haitham Al Ghudami, Economic Advisor, General Authority for Zakat and Tax, Mr. Noman Ahmed, Tax Partner, Deloitte and Touche, Middle East, Mr. Shadi Abu Shafara, Director, Indirect Tax and Fiscal Policy, Pricewaterhouse, Coopers Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Mr. Irfan Javed Nagi, Group CFO, Tanmiya Foods Group, and our moderator for this session is Mr. Adnan Mufti, tax partner, Moore Stephens, Sheikh Khan Mufti. Welcome, gentlemen. Assalamu alaikum and good afternoon to all of you. Uh, as mentioned by Abdullah, this session is going to be a panel discussion on uh, the ins and out of the value added tax, the much about, much talked about tax. Uh, in town at the moment. We have a panel of distinguished uh, professionals among us. Uh, so we'll try to take you to various aspects of the upcoming VAT law. And at the end of the session, uh, we'll be taking uh, some questions from the audience. And this will be followed by another uh, presentation on the, on the theoretical and practical aspect of the upcoming VAT law. So, uh, gentlemen, uh, thank you very much uh, for being with us today. Uh, as we are uh, fortunate enough to have Mr. Alaitam with us, my first question, sir, would be with you. Uh, can you elaborate the timelines by when we can expect the VAT law? Uh, because we understand that it's going to be uh, implemented from 1st January and we don't have the VAT law, so basically uh, we would like to hear from you the details. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, let me say on behalf of my colleagues in the General Authority of Zakat and Tax, thank you for inviting us here. Uh, the draft VAT law will be expected to be released in the coming few days. Uh, a public consultation form will be available to submit any. Yeah to submit any comments at the Gazette website. After that, the VAT draft regulations will be submitted in the Gazette website after a few months. As a part of the publication of the regulation, the policy position including the VAT treatment of specific sectors will be communicated. Uh, well, uh, can you briefly elaborate the reasons for introducing the VAT uh, law in the kingdom, are falling oil prices to be blamed for this uh, new fiscal levy? Yeah, as we all seen lately, the high volatile energy markets around the globe, and if Saudi Arabia decided to continue its expand, uh, expansion levels, uh, we are up to two, two options. The first option is to do nothing. And it's got a severe implication to our future generations because of the level of debts to GDP and diminishing of the reserves. The second option is actually to conduct the fiscal reform. The fiscal reform, which includes the non-oil revenue, uh, got uh, we, uh, one of the, the plans is to actually implement the uh, taxation reform, which actually include the VAT and the excise tax. So that's the reason we are here today. So really, the first option is not an option. Yes, of, yeah, absolutely. Not option. Absolutely, not yes. Option. Yes. <coughs> Noman, what I would like to have your opinion on what you 
expect from the government to ensure a level playing field so that any compliant business may not get jeopardized because of a non compliant competitor what do you think should should, should the government or the tax agency should be doing yeah that's a good question i mean uh, and by the way before i start doing that uh, thank you for inviting me and i'm i'm really impressed with this forum and this uh, this event today it really is a very professionally run and thank you to icap for doing that for, for for this for arranging this uh, event going back to your question um look in terms of level playing field i mean it is important that you know the government introduces a very robust compliance uh, uh and and an audit process um because without that you're not going to have that level of level playing field as you mentioned you're going to have people who are going to be interpreting things one way or interpreting things the other way etc so it is important that there there, there is a very robust uh, um place uh, system in place and there should be penalties for non compliance so it's not that uh, you know i'll put it on side not do it there should be there should be uh, significant penalties for non compliance that's the only way you will encourage this level playing field um and of course um there should be a dissemination of knowledge so that there is there are people who understand what's going on and i think that's important the awareness campaigns that we we we're beginning to now see in your in um, in the uae etc these sort of things are very important and i guess finally um mufti what we talked about earlier is your systems you know the robustness of the systems of compliance chari how do you see the economy behaving after the first after first january 2000 you you feel there would be a price war there would be you'd feel there would be a shrink volume shrinking uh, thanks for the question i think i got the most difficult to handle uh but from that perspective any any introduction of tax will actually have an impact on the gdp <clears throat> mainly vat is a tax on consumption so it will hit mostly the consumption uh, part of the gdp which is the consumption plus the investment plus the export minus the imports so mainly any tax on consumption by itself will reduce the gdp so it will have this impact uh but not to to the extent if if it was managed properly pro uh, uh, properly and and the, the money collected from vat was used in the economy for investment purposes because investment will actually improve the gdp so th that's from the gdp perspective uh, another impact of vat is mainly on on the level of prices since it's a it's a tax on consumption as well it will impact the level of prices <clears throat> so there will be some inflationary effect related to to vat however since the rate is really 5% and there is Uh, a perception that some goods will be zero rated and or exempt therefore it's not going to apply across all the goods and services in the same way this will limit a little bit the inflationary effect of vat and from other countries experience uh, for example i give the example of australia it has been proven that the inflationary effect is a one time increase so it will increase in the beginning then it will stabilize and prices could go back to normal um so uh, there is a lot of uh, estimation that have been done regarding what would be the impact of the gdp so i just wanted to give some reference numbers just to give the audience some insight into the impact of gdp on the economy uh like in oecd countries for example the percentage of the vat from the or the vat revenues or the contribution of vat revenues to the gdp is around 6.6% however it is expected to be around 1 to 2% in in the gcc so so the impact is not that high as in other uh, countries so i hope this answers the question yeah sure so do you agree yes yes or you would like so to add I'm something just going to say as far as inflation is concerned i mean the general um, um, impression is that um you know it's 5% it's going to be 5% inflation that's not really correct is it i mean it's it, it depends on a lot of other factors as you were saying so it's not so so on january 2 um 2018 and we're not going to see a 5% inflation are we? no the, definitely it's uh, it doesn't uh, the, the rate of vat does not really translate directly into a rate of inflation Absolutely. it's uh, as i said there are products and services that will be exempt or zero rated and therefore their price should not increase 
Um, so generally, the inflation should be below the rate of VAT that is applied because of this uh, exemption or zero rating of certain goods and services. And one time. And the one time uh, effect, yes. Irfan, you represent the industry. What do you think, do you think the businesses are geared up to basically take up this challenge from 1st January? And what do you feel are the key challenges, for, especially for the small and medium to, to the SMEs? because of this new fiscal levy. Yeah, thank you very much for having me here. Uh, if we take a direct split between the type of corporates and organizations working in Saudi Arabia, business houses, etc. So, you know, large, medium term, there is a very good level of awareness, uh, readiness is there. People are working, uh, organizations like uh, um, Equa or uh, Al Marai or even uh, medium sized businesses like ours is basically uh, they are getting ready to gear up. They have the access to the capacity or they already have built on the capacity to uh, cater to the requirements of VAT and even IFRS which is uh, this is this year there are two kind of uh, regimes which are going to hit us. So they are already on the way. Uh, yes, the uh, delay in the uh, issue of the bylaws has hindered their uh, capacity or their uh, ability to tweak their or to reconfigure their IT systems as of now, but uh, they are still progressing very, very well. But on the flip side, if we go to the SME level, uh, there are small organizations which might be efficiently managed as of now, so they might have access to, you know, adding on capacity, they, they might have the awareness, but Unfortunately, there are a lot of, uh, you know, SMEs who are working on single, you know, shop basis or single uh, business basis or single uh, small plants. Uh, and this is a big concern that, you know, would they be ready? Are they, where are they? There is no, currently there is no tool to measure what level of readiness they are on. Um, for example, we deal with a lot of, you know, bakalas, we deal with a lot of uh, retailers who are definitely within the threshold of 375,000 uh, reals. Uh, per annum, and how will they cope up with this? Uh, will, will we be able to do certain partnership with them, or do we? Uh, would we be allowed to do businesses with these non-registered people or unregistered people, or people who are supposed to be registered but they are not able to comply with these? So these are the questions which I believe that uh, the government or the VAT authorities would be basically, you know, uh, they have to come out with the bylaws as soon as possible to answer these questions. Uh, so can I, can I, can I have your views, Mr. Alhatham, on this particular area? Whether you think the businesses are geared up to take up this challenge, and what are the issues or the challenges which you as a regulator see coming up because a post uh, 1st January 2018? Well, you're extremely right. Uh, and one thing we look at, we actually suggest there are various measures that organization can prepare themselves to set up a VAT team to actually start to implement the project in their organization, to start engaging uh, IT providers to assess the scope uh, and complexity of the required IT changes. Uh, we should even, uh, uh, they should even conduct uh, a primarily uh, impact assessment of the VAT. But what is the condition that we want to see with organization uh, so they can be VAT ready? We think that the goods and services are classified in accordance to their VAT treatment and their right VAT rate. Uh, organization have the ability to record and archive invoices. Organization are able to display the VAT inclusive price at the point of sales. Organization are able to track and assess input in, uh, VAT and output VAT and generate VAT returns. Organization are even able to pay and receive payment electronically, which is the invoices. So there's a ver various measures that businesses can actually conduct to prepare themselves for the VAT. On our side, from Gazette, uh, our obligation to actually reach to the organization themselves, the business, the business community, and prepare them for the, the January 1st of 2018. And this is what actually we're doing right now. We're starting engaging the multiple workshops around Saudi Arabia. We start, we're starting our campaign. And actually, we, if you look at the news, there are some various uh, meetings that have been conducted within, in the, inside Gazette and Chamber of Commerce and with Sukba as well. 
this you 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 calling for big agendas so, noman do you think uh, consultants and especially the accounting firms can help businesses in this particular and a smooth transition to what because uh, the, the the areas highlighted by the other panelists especially by mr latim they, they are they they have far reaching impact not only on particular entity but to its vendors to its clients to the regulators to the bankers etc etc yeah um i think so I, i'll just go back to a point that that, that ifan just made and i'm sorry i called you mufti i should call you adnan my apologies for that um in terms of readiness i, I whilst i do take your point uh, uh, ifan that that larger firms are 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 generally probably larger companies are more established companies are generally readier than the smaller companies in vat but i i think in general what i say i see in the marketplace at the moment is that there is this sense of we'll wait for the law to come out so even the larger companies are not taking that big step forward and saying to themselves look it's going to come in now very soon it's january 1 2018 is not that far away um and the, we really need to start planning for this quickly it's just like ifrs it's on it's on us and i was very uh, when i was listening to the ifrs pro, um uh, presentation in the morning it's very similar the implementation processes and thought processes are very similar to what 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 ifrs has done if vat is going to be very similar um in terms of so you know if you look at if you look at the timeline now you are you are sorry i'm digressing from the question but i just want to talk about if you look at the timeline now you're now here in where are we in end of may virtually end of may you got ramadan coming you got the holidays coming you've got the eid holidays coming um and and generally for a larger organization we it, it takes about 6 to 9 months to implement from from cradle to death it takes about 6 to 8 because it's not just the biggest problem mistake we make is we think it's a back office thing it's not it's a it's a it's not just back office i think fawaz al fawaz also mentioned the same thing in ifrs it's not just back office it's front office also it's a, the front office has really got to get involved in this and understand it so you're not really left with that much time to be ready so coming back to the your question about the accounting firms i think it's uh, a, the, it's a moral obligation on the accounting firms um to 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 get involved in this in this process and and they have done it before they've done it in australia they've done it in canada they've done it in malaysia the last one um they've done it in all these so they have um they've they've definitely got the experience now there won't be that many people around the 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 talent pool on vat implementation teams is limited is stretched and is limited that's not just me saying that you know we should be charging more fees on that in in the future but but gen, but literally it is very very limited talent pool so the accounting firms will be able to manage this if they are brought in at the right time and earlier in the process the other thing for obligatory on the accounting firms is to start writing articles about this 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 thing how it's to be implemented and educate the masses um because it it will not get done if we do not do these things so yes there is a very significant role for the accounting firm and they've done it and they've got the experience to do it but it needs to start now we are my worry is i mean last week i was sitting with a client and when i went through this timeline my worry was we're just getting too fine uh, to the um uh, to the january 1 deadline there won't be much time left to run a dummy um uh, to run a dummy uh, vat return before going live on january 1 2018 i mean i i made i'm part of my my deloitte middle east i'm part of the excom and i was asked tasked by excom to develop this proposal for our own vat and i went to the board afterwards and they they told me they accused me of scare tactics <laughs> but it is true it's not really scare tactic it is really happening it's it's we're running out of time sorry i just got a bit more thank you uh now coming to a very technical question i think tadi you will be the you will be the right person to be asked this <laughs> you understand you understand that the reverse charge mechanism operates in every jurisdiction where the vat law is implemented but when it comes to services it's it's a bit tricky you think the reverse charge principle is going to be implemented first the second thing is whether the taxpayer would be able to claim the the associated vat yes uh good question as well thank thanks for uh, sharing this 
so mainly, it is a technical feature of VAT, uh, which has been actually implemented in the GCC framework agreement. Uh, so the GCC framework agreement stipulates that if, if, um, a, GC, if a taxable person in a GCC country receives a service from a non-resident, then this person has the obligation to, to settle the tax on behalf of that non-resident. From VAT perspective, this stems from the neutrality principle, uh, which, which is already applied in Saudi uh, if we look at the direct taxation where you have withholding tax on services provided from abroad, for example. So the same principle applies for VAT because you want to treat the non-resident similarly, similarly to the resident, uh, resident person. So therefore, VAT would be, uh, would be charged on the services provided from a non-resident. Now, the, the issue is how to, um, to be compliant with these requirements. So most countries, like the EU model, for example, they opted for this reverse charge mechanism for, for the services to shift the liability uh, from the supplier to the buyer. So if I'm the buyer of the service, I will have to record the VAT in my, in my books, uh, and it's going to be an in and an out. So it will not have a cash flow impact. So I just record it as an input tax credit for me, and also as an output tax, so I would pay it for the government. And it also will affect the threshold for which you actually calculate your turnover, because it is also the revenues that will be added to your turnover. Now, the only issue that when, when reverse charge doesn't become uh, claimable is, for example, uh, maybe an example is easier to, to, to grasp, is if you are a holding entity, for example, uh, and you are receiving these services from a non-resident, you are obliged to reverse charge these, uh, uh, these entries. So you are going to claim an input and an output in the same time. But from VAT perspective, if you meet the threshold as a holding company, you become a taxable person, and therefore you have to register for that. But because you're not providing any taxable supply, you will not have the capability to actually claim back the refund. Yes, precisely. That That's why I, I was referring. Yes. Me. So, so you agree... <clears throat> that there is a cash flow issue. There could be a cash flow issue. Yeah, like from the, 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 it will be for some of the taxpayers, but not on a general basis. On a general basis, you can actually claim it as an in and an out, so there would be no cash flow impact. But if you fall within the type of clients that provide, or the, the taxable person that provide exempt supplies, so then you need to, to look into that, because uh, at that stage, you either cannot claim it back as an input tax credit, or you need to apportion that amount based on the amount of supply of taxable versus exempt supplies. So same question I would uh, pose before you, uh, Irfan. What would be your suggestion and advice uh, to the CFO vis-a-vis -vis the cash flow management, especially in case where the uh, bed debts are not allowed as a, as a blanket deduction, first one. The second one is, that VAT refunds are not honored on time. For example, if you, if you take the Pakistani example, we have billions and billions of rupees stuck up with the tax authorities as uh, VAT refunds, they are not honored. So what would be your advice, especially from the cash flow point of view? Yeah. See, uh, historically or traditionally in Saudi Arabia, we have not been, uh, you know, income tax and zakat cash flows are not planned on a regular basis, okay? And it's not part of the working capital equation normal working capital equation. VAT definitely would require us to plan VAT cash flows also because uh, the way businesses are set up, some have long uh, inventory days, some have long uh, uh, you know, uh, receivable days, some have very short payable days. So we will end up into these timing differences and uh, as of now, since the bylaws are not out and uh, you know, uh, uh, looking at the current history of uh, you know, uh, refunds uh, getting adjusted, uh, we don't have that uh, mechanism right now. Uh, yes, there is a netting mechanism at a group level, so maybe that could be put into place. So, so people who are trying to, who have a bigger group, who have different businesses running under groups, they have this, uh, you know, they need to basically work out and see that what kind of cash flows would be coming in. So there's an opportunity of merging their business uh, businesses as a group and getting it registered. But again, this is only at a country level, not... Uh, at a GCC level. So you might have to create blocks of those groups in different com countries and some of these groups might remain in a refund situation. So, uh, so that, that would be a challenge. And you know, anyway, uh, uh, looking at the uh, 
VAT structure in all the organizations or all the countries which are already there. There is a, this refund is a big, big issue. Uh, so this should be part of your cash flow planning. This needs to be taken care of at a very, very minute detail level. Uh, and uh, because uh, this would be a bi-monthly uh, uh, sort of a return period. Probably quarterly or monthly, it would be monthly. Yeah, so, so let's see what, how it comes out, but uh, uh, let's see how it would uh, churn out. But definitely big, uh, you know, focus has to be given. Bad debts, again, uh, as of now, we are still waiting. The, the framework which has uh, recently came out uh, mentions that it is uh, on the discretion of the member states, how they are going to allow it. So let's see how it comes out. If the general definition by income tax goes, then it would be basically that we have to, uh, you know, uh, uh, sufficiently provide evidence that enough has been done to collect. Uh, so if that's the case, then it may take, you know, two years to get uh, some sort of uh, claim back in. Uh, that too, if you're uh, lucky. Uh, uh, so Thank you. Mr. Aretham, my distinguished panelists seem to be, you see, to be just, just suspecting yeah. challenges, issues. Would you like to have, would you like to share with us some of the benefits, if any, this, this fiscal levy is going to uh, bring to the society or to the economic system as such? Yeah. And number two is, what are, what are the next plans? What are, what, what's next after the implementation of after 1st January? Well, looking at the benefits first, uh, there is benefits. It's, <laughs> first of all, it's, uh, as we said previously, it's, uh, the goal is to balance the budget. And that's uh, the value added tax and other new tax regimes expected to be the second largest source of income after oil. Uh, it's actually can shrink even the cash economy that within Saudi Arabia, which is well known. Uh, it's actually got even greater transparency in the market interaction, resulting in more positive market part participations new profession in the accounting industry with the VAT, um, even in demand for new financial products. So there is some benefits that actually we can look at it at a macro level. But uh, for Gazette, the next steps for Gazette, uh, well, it's, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot of steps. Uh, first of all, we need over the coming months, Gazette will be distributing information relating to VAT introduction. It is important for businesses to follow these updates and maintain a direct engagement with Gazette in order to ensure an optimum level of readiness and also to rely client's level of readiness. Once introduced, uh, uh, as we said previously, Gazette will manage day-to-day -day administration of the value-added tax in close coordination with the management of the corporate income tax and zakat. In preparation of this, Gazette even is currently undergoing a significant transformation and is scaling up capabilities and resources, several channels for the interaction with taxpayers ahead of and post VAT launch are currently being set up. Even a survey for, to more than 25,000 taxpayers have been sent and was conducted in March for an initial assessment of VAT readiness. Uh, for the largest set of taxpayers, dedicated relationship managers uh, are assigned uh, for ongoing engagement. And then even gazet branches will be maintained and can be assessed by taxpayers and additional channels for the small taxpayers, the SMEs. In parallel to these efforts, we are also launching several media campaigns to inform the public that's going to be seen soon. So those are generally the next steps for the general authority of Zakat. Thank you, sir. So uh, uh, now we'll have Q&A from the audience. Uh, can we have mics among the audience, please? Yes. Uh, can we start from the front? Can we have another mic at the back or probably in the middle? Yeah, this gentleman. Yeah, thank you for giving me the opportunity. I just... Uh, yeah, as, as it was uh, discussed here, VAT is something like uh, IFRS. It takes a long time to go through. 
and to understand. I, I do agree. And we say the devil is in the detail. And uh, it's, the, the time frame is very, very short. I agree as well with Mr. Naumann on this. We from Almarai uh, uh, have just started this project. However, we, we are not sure whether we will be able to fulfill this. Since we don't know about the, the details, um, for example, we, we have no clue about the timing of the registration for just a VAT identification number. How will you ensure that your counterparts are registered? That's a simple example. A second one is, uh, what, about, what about the forms? We don't see any form. We don't know whether we have to submit a consolidated version or for each and single entity. Sir, so may I interrupt? Uh, we all understand that the law has not been uh, No, no. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying uh, I mean, the, I would the question I have. I would appreciate if you could just uh, raise your question yeah. Over on the overall uh, information that is available to date or on the, on the uh, impact upon your own organization or the uh, society as such or the consumer behavior <coughs> because uh, until and unless the law is not available to the masses, I don't think any of the gentlemen may be able to. Yeah, okay, but, but, but the basic is the VAT registration, right. ID number. When, do we, when can we expect this and when can we expect the laws so that we really understand how to yeah. uh, go into the details? Sure. Mr. Aletam, yeah. would you like to please answer this question? Yes. Uh, as we said previously that the law will be uh, uploaded to the website in a couple of days. You can see the draft and you can actually submit any questions and inquiries that you have, any concerns that you want through the online or uh, through our one of the channels. Um, I totally understand your concern, and we receive those concerns a lot, and we actually conduct nowadays those workshops and seminars to actually push further to make the market ready, because you guys, as our partners, we cannot succeed without you. That's a fact. So our obligation is to be ready to 2018, January 1st, and we sure we are actually sure that a lot of you know institutions will be ready. It's not all. One example right here, I got leading institutions have already completed most of these steps. You know through the readiness, one of them is actually uh, really ahead because they used the same information that been used in other countries and they yeah. are already set up That's their it. IT systems. And one of those countries, one of those institutions, are Toyota. So there is company actually pushing for them, you know, really fast to actually get ready for those. Yeah, and I think that well, that's a very important point. Um, when when VAT was introduced in certain other countries, I mean, they had also announced that it will be introduced in a couple of years' time, and the laws really came out very late. The, and and they, then complaints were raised, well, let's have an extension, etc. But the gov those countries said no, because <coughs> the VAT system is... Is, is generally quite standard throughout the world. So you should have really done it by, you know, 99% of the time, 99% you should be ready. Fine, you want to tweak it a little bit because what is exempt, what is not exempt, etc. That will come out in the law. But generally, 90 or 99%, you should be ready. So there are lots of companies that, 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 that I'm aware of, my clients, etc., that I'm aware of, that started last October to start implementing. VAT uh, in, in, into their processes, and they are just getting to, to the readiness stage that, 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 that my friend is talking about here. So uh, yes, we need to know some of the nuances, but primarily we can still do, we can start really tomorrow and start and be 90% complete on, on these issues within the time frame. And these little tweaks, etc. the return, the return is going to be a one pager, it's a very small, four, four or five boxes. Generally, Would I remember when I was an assistant starting 979, the first thing I did was a VAT, audit of a VAT return. So, the, you know, it's a, such a simple thing in those days. It still is going to be the same sort of thing. So, yes, you know, uh, please, can we have a second yes. question? My question is that uh, on uh, 1st January 2018, you know that two countries have already informed that VAT will be starting. 
is Dubai, uh, UAE and Saudi Arabia. If you compare uh, with uh, Saudi to UAE, you see that the awareness program have already started and they have given some guidelines for that what will be their uh, period for tax, tax period is there already there, then this uh, some policies is already be defined. So just I want to understand that is Saudi Arabia lacking on that one because if it is delayed, it all, they already started in March this you know awareness programs and uh, it's full, house full, 700, 800, it's a small country as compared to Saudi. Second thing is that one, they've already informed that what will be the zero rated, you know, as prospective zero rated exempt items are there and what will be the procedures and how things will impact it. They've already announced that uh, voluntary registration period, third quarter, fourth quarter is, you know, compulsory registration. So my question is that one, as compared to, because you, uh, Saudi and UAE both are going you know, to start on 1st January 2018. So if you compare Saudi with UAE, you find that there is a big gap. Mr. Alitham, would you yeah. like to answer this? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> tax. <laughs> the, <laughs> every question is like, <laughs> uh, yeah. I need to turn off my phone for technical reasons. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, um, I know that it's the, the taxpayer readiness is a major issue, and we understand that other countries like the UAE actually started that and um, we are pushing far, further and harder to actually introduce those through our workshops that we already did and we're continuing to do and we're going to continue until 2018 until, because as, as, as I said to our friend over here that without our partners we cannot succeed. So our goal actually does not make any sense to be honest just to surprise everyone and tell them surprise, you've been taxed, pay up. We can't do that. We need to make you guys ready. So in our own interest to make you ready, so we're pushing hard on further in our next steps. We'll see whatever you want to see. <laughs> we'll give you the proper details that you wanted. Even we go going to put up a, a public consolation form online, as I said, with the VAT law and the regulations. And so we can actually hear and read your concerns or any comments regarding the policies or regarding the regulations themselves. Thank you. Can we have the third question? Please yes. make it brief because you're short of time. For sure, for sure. We'll keep it brief. Uh, I have a quick question. I think uh, most of the concerns that, were, that are you know, available in the market have already been raised now. The few things that I need to add on, we know most of these uh, costs now getting added in terms of, uh, uh, you know, these expat fees and everything else is coming in the same time. That will keep all the SMEs especially into a cash crunch situations, you know, it will be difficult to sustain uh, for many of the SMEs. Is the Zakat Authority working with any other government organization to make sure, or banks or financial institutions, to ensure that the, the businesses are supported in that time so that they can come out with these threats in terms of cash flow or any on cost increases the, so that they can pass through those difficult times. First. Secondly, I think, uh, as Asif just mentioned very rightly, what we feel are that the communication is not enough uh, on this subject. Maybe the, the, the groundwork must have been done by now uh, on the back, back seats. But uh, actually, the people in the industry, they are not aware of it. Uh, in any given situation, you know, the law would have been out. I mean, you know, we are working on it. But those laws are then sent to the chambers and the industries for their feedbacks, you know. So your people are ready. So this is where I think the communication as well as, you know, onboarding, this is where what we are, we are lacking. Uh, primarily, I just want your opinion on, and for sure, having the law, having the details early enough, it gives power to the companies, to the organization, to draw their uh, strategies. How will they react to it? Well, because what I see now, most of these uh, costs, 5% increase, will end up not on the consumer. It will end up, most of it will end up on the uh, companies itself. itself. For, for, especially for the companies who are in the small price points situations. Impossible for them to pass it on. Please, thank you. Well, uh, I think uh, your question was earlier, it is by most of the panelists. We understand, it has been elaborated by Mr. Latham that the law is going to be shared very soon from now. 
and on Noman also shared his experience that uh, some of the entities uh, they have been in planning phase. They have, in, in fact, they have, they have, they are into advanced phase, phase of completion of the VAT programs. So I think uh, we'll have to wait for some some more uh, weeks. I think within weeks we'll be having some more information. Can we have the last question from the back? Yes. Uh, Habon Yusuf from Naji Law Firm. My question uh, has to do with the uh, economical impact. We are looking at a uh, negative inflation for the past four months, uh, slow exports for uh, the oil prices are low. And what I want to know is how will this impact the general uh, GDP and the economy? So, Not so, just the businesses. So I, c I couldn't so hear the, the last thing. The consumption is low. Uh, we had for the past four months uh, negative GDP, sorry, negative inflation. Uh, the oil prices are low. The, imp the input, we still are a, an input uh, based economy. So, what will be the impact on the general economy? Okay, so, so you're, uh, I couldn't hear everything you said, but uh, just let me repeat my understanding so I can answer you properly. Uh, you mentioned uh, the inflation and the impact of that on the overall economy, if I, that's, that's what I'm looking at. No, uh, the thing is, uh, the VAT is it's going, to be on, uh, it's going to be affecting the consumption. Yep. And the consumption for the past four months has been, has been low. Uh, for the first time for the, uh, within 10 years, we have uh, witnessed a negative inflation. So will this have any impact? Yeah, like g generally, like um, as any other tax, when, when, whenever you have a situation where you actually need to implement a certain tax for budgetary reasons or to, to diversify revenues, uh, revenue sources, any tax that any government would implement would have an impact on the economy. VAT in particular is a tax on consumption and therefore it, it, it impacts the price of the goods because for the, from the customer perspective, if I'm buying anything tomorrow, after 1 1 2018 post implementation, I will have to pay an additional 5% of that price because businesses will decide to most probably to pass, pass through the VAT to, 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 uh, to the customer because that's a mandatory by law. They have to charge 5%. So this will create an inflationary effect, but in most countries where VAT has been implemented, that inflationary effect was only a one time rise in inflation, in inflation rate, so in prices. So it will impact it on the first year and then everything goes to normal. Uh, so prices will adjust, the market will adjust, but it, it requires some time for, for people to change their consumption pattern, for businesses to know what, what we can pass through, what we can assume as cost, and to, to get adapted to that new tax environment that has been created. But it's not like a sustainable inflation. It, do, it means that it will not raise by 5% the first year and 5% the second year, and it will have a continuous effect. It's a one-time effect. And if you compare the VAT rate that is being applied in the GCC with other countries, like if you go to Europe, you have countries that actually apply 20% VAT. And on top of that, you have income tax and other type of taxes. So still, we are in an environment where, uh, where uh, the individual is not really uh, heavily taxed or the, the main source of government revenue is not really coming from taxation. So, so therefore, there is, a, uh, there is a leeway or there is um, a room for introducing certain revenue instruments for the government. And this is what, uh, what, uh, what is being planned and, and has been communicated uh, a while back. Because VAT has not started uh, yesterday. It has been really discussed throughout the GCC for, for a long time now. I think the discussion started around 2006. And now the concept has matured, and all GCC member states are looking at, looking at this just to, 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 to uh, based on Vision 2030, to, to de diversify revenue sources, to reduce uh, dependency on oil revenues, because this is the future, and this is what we are looking for. I find myself Thank agreeing you. with uh, Mr. Shadi. And just uh, to add something, is that excluding any other factors? We're talking about uh, citizen accounts, any other factors, royal decrees. 
from macroeconomic factors from outside external or internal, that will eventually will affect what is the inflation or what is exactly going to be the impact resulting from the VAT impl implementation in Saudi Arabia. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, all the, I would thank all the panelists uh, for their valuable contribution. Because of time constraints, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we uh, were not able to basically take all your questions. I know uh, there are many questions. We can go on debating and discussing them. But as mentioned by the learned panelists, we are waiting for the law and the bylaws to come. And once they are released to public, they will be, it will be more appropriate and meaningful to discuss the provisions and the differentiations and then of course we can basically tailor them for our own particular individual needs and we'll have a session uh, after the lunch as such uh, on basic uh, theories and principles of art. Uh, hopefully this will also be helpful for you. So over to Abdul Akbar. Thank you. Thank you, Adnan. Thank you, Adnan. Uh, gentlemen, thank you very much for your valuable inputs. May I request the President of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Pakistan, Mr. Adil, to please come forward and give the mementos to our esteemed panelists. Mr. Iqbal, if you are around, can I request you as well to come? Mr. Uh, Al Haytham Al Ghutmi, the memento will be given by the President of the Institute. <laughs> Mr. Noman Ahmed. Mr. Shadi Abu Shakra, <laughs> Mr. Irfan Javed Nagi, <laughs> and Mr. Adnan Mufti. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, may I request the panelists to please take a seat. Uh, Mr. President and Mr. Akbal, can you just stay for one more, the last set of awards actually. Um, uh, Mr. President will be giving a, a memento to Mr. Akbal, the President of the Saudi chapter of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Pakistan in recognition of his services. Can we have a clapping please? May I request uh, Muhammad Asif Iqbal to come on stage here so that he can announce the remaining uh, mementos. Thank you very much. Thank you, Abdullah. And this was due to your vested interest. I would like to invite uh, Mr. Nadim Yusuf to give uh, the shield to Abdullah Akbar for his uh, untiring efforts. Uh, for his excellent work as Master of Ceremony, especially coming from Jeddah, my dear friend Abdullah Akbar from KPMG Jeddah. With this, uh, we break now for two. Okay. Uh, Two more shields, yes, uh, Mr. Nadeem, uh, for distribution to Mr. Sarma Demat Khan, who is the chairman of ICAP Overseas Committee, who has specially come from London. He is a council member of ICAP as well. He specially come from London to attend this event. With this, we now break for uh, lunch, and lunch is served at Ogabini. Uh, on the right from the uh, reception, from the main gate of the lobby, it's on the right. And may I request you all to kindly come back by 2.30, uh, 2.15. But you have to really come back uh, because uh, the two interesting presentations on VAT 
are uh, will be giving the more details about the VAT and answering the unanswered questions on VAT. And finally, we will also have be having a raffle draw, two raffle draws at the end of the session uh, for two uh, tour packages for Malaysia and Turkey. So those who are present, only those will be eligible for the lucky draw. Those who leave after lunch will not be eligible for the lucky draw. Thank you very much and see you after lunch.